the Cycles Research Institute. Welcome to a talk with Ray Tomes of the Cycles Research Institute. Ray is going to tell us a little something about the monsoon cycles of India. Ray, thank you for this. What can you tell us about the monsoons? Yeah, uh, um, I'll mention here, in case I forget later, another one of our advisors for the Cycles Research Institute, um, Gupta Shyam, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, he's done a study of long-term things relating to the monsoon cycle uh, and long-term climate studies, um, and that's quite an interesting one as well, so that's something else to refer to in relation to this. Yes. Um, this is the, this graph. Yeah. Is showing from um, 19, about 1948 through to 2000, mm -hmm. the rainfall in India. Uh, and you'll see um, each of these peaks is a year. Yes. And what happens is, in India, more or less, it doesn't rain for eight months, maybe a couple of sprinkles here and there. And then for four months, it does nothing but rain. Wow. And that's the monsoon. Yeah. Uh, it's a very extreme climate for, for what we people that live in countries like you and I do, yes. where you get a bit of rain through the year. There may be a season where there's a bit more, but it doesn't just rain continuously like no, this. It doesn't. Uh, so, but you will see that, having said that, uh, there's some ups and downs. It doesn't rain the same amount every year. And the date it arrives is fairly uniform, but and it sweeps across the country in a few days, you know, when it arrives. Yeah. Uh, and so that all that stuff is known and studied. I'm not going to talk about that. There's other people that are much more expert on those things. What I'm going to look at is, these variations and uh, what else that data is hidden in here once we get past this extreme uh, cycle of the year. Yeah. This is a, a spectral analysis using that data that's there uh, and it shows us um, here we're going from the number of um, the, the um, frequency of the cycle and I've labeled in years um, the period that is determined um, by the analysis with CATS. Uh, and it says the fundamental cycle is 1.0001 years. So in other words, it's a year, yeah. um, pretty accurately. Um, that's about as accurate as you would hope to get with 50 years of data. Yeah. Uh, it says there's other cycles of a half a year mm -hmm. and a third of a year. Yes, in other nice. words, the shape of the thing yeah. is not a sine wave. It's got some harmonics in it. Uh, the shape is much more pointed at the top. Yeah. Um, and so we get these other ones, and there's probably other ones that are a quarter and a fifth and so on. Mm -hmm. um, we do see some other ones, a couple of secondary peaks each side of these. Um, and so these ones, uh, we can see that one's 0 0.027 less, and that's 0 0.028 more. And that means those will make beats with us, and the reciprocal of 0 0.028 is about 36, 37 years. That's saying there are some beats. There is a longer cycle in which the yearly cycle is fluctuating. Oh, okay. Um, and these things are saying the same. Uh, and then there's a couple of other little rogue ones here. We see these other things that have got different periods here. Uh, are these real? Well, yes. Uh, generally, I just put in here the ones that have got a, um, a significant. We'll see there's a 19-year cycle, a 7-year, a little less than 5-year, and a couple of other ones just over 2 and just under 3 years. So there are some other cycles present, yeah. uh, but it's a bit hard to see those with that very strong um, annual cycle. Yeah. Because the cycle is um, lopsided, yes. the fluctuations when the rainfall is high are much greater than the fluctuations when it's low, I've taken the square root of the rainfall. That okay. has the effect that the lower end gets expanded ah. and the upper end gets compacted. Okay. So it becomes more of a uh, similar fluctuations at the high and low because end. Because the changes at the low end are much smaller than yeah. the changes at yeah. the high end. So we're trying to... So this this process uh, allows us to look at um, some shorter term cycles that may be passing right through um, the seasons yes. that exist. Um, so that's so that's the first step. Um, and then with the seasonal variations removed. So at that point, I then take the average mon annual cycle Okay. That occurs throughout the whole thing, yeah. and I take it away from it, and this is what we end up with. So now it, it, there's no, not so obviously anything going on. Although we see an odd thing like that looks about the same distance as that. Maybe it's not, uh, but there's some. Um, it's it's something we can look at now for other cycles than the ones strictly related to the year. Yes. And this is now a spectrum. Yes. Uh, of that that previous graph, uh, but what this is showing is um, a series of cycles yeah uh, these what the blue ones are in days and the red ones are in years so we do see there is a 19 year cycle and a seven year cycle yeah and a few other ones there's 3.86 year cycles yeah. um, there um, and then these other ones in days now i've marked four of them 
with a little green arrow. Yeah. Um, and uh, the reason is that these are cycles that are seen in other things, uh, particularly the sun. I, I showed you in that previous one, there was a cycle of a little over 600 days, 300, 150 something in 75 were present in that magnesium ratio in the sun. Yeah. Uh, here we're seeing exactly the same cycles. This is the first time I found them on something relating to the earth. Yes. Um, before that, they were just known as solar cycles, found in many things in the sun, but this is found found out on Earth. So 75.75 days, 153, 303.5627. And this is um, pretty close to a doubling. Yes. Pretty yes. close to a doubling, pretty close to a doubling. And clearly coinciding with the solar years. Oh, yeah, solar, solar cycles. cycles. And there are some other ones here. There's this one, this one, and this one that aren't part of that part of that pattern, which are significant cycles also. Uh, so that's the so the hidden inside some data, which has got one extreme cycle that tend to mask everything else. If we process the data right to remove that one, yes, uh, and to make it so that cycles happening during the very dry period where they'll be very small yeah. and very, during the very wet period where they'll be very large. By yes. pre-processing the data, we can make that allow those cycles to proceed right through. Now, the guys that were finding the 154-day cycle in, in, in the solar data yes. were reporting, they would say, they would make a report during cycle so-and-so, and they were looking at it during the maximum of the cycle and not during the minimum. But what I found is when I did the same sort of square root thing on the uh, sunspot numbers yeah. um, and, and then plotted it, you could follow them right through the whole lot. So it would be there. They would find it in that so, uh, peak and that peak. You could trace it through the troughs as well. Because you magnified the low changes, yeah, uh, the small changes at the low. And it could be seen throughout the whole thing then. Yeah. So this sort of processing of data, um, some people might think it's some sort of fiddling. Um, it's not. It's um, who's to say what it is you measured. Um, if you measured the area of sunspots, uh, who's to say you shouldn't have measured the radius of them, um, which is would be the square root of the area, right? Yes. Um, so who's to say that that's what you should have measured or shouldn't? Uh, transforming data, it's not creating new cycles. It's allowing you to see yeah. what's already there. Just a magnifying uh, glass. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, that's so. So um, and again, these other cycles, like nineteen years, um, we know nineteen years is connected to the moon. Um, that there's a lot of cycles related to the moon in that vicinity, and so uh, would that be the tilt of the orbital plane of the moon, or how close uh, it is to yes, the Earth? Yes, it's 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 if that's the plane of the Earth's orbit, yep, and the Earth's equator is at this angle, twenty three degrees, yep, then this is the wobble of the moon's orbit about that. Yes. So its tilt relative to the Earth's orbit is getting larger and smaller over that sort of cycle. Yes. But there's a number of other ones that happened over that period as well. There's a coincidence of cycles around that. There's an eight, That's 18.6 years, the one I described. There's, there are a couple of cycles very close to 19 years, which are the where a number of other things all come together. The eclipse cycles, um, uh, the, the, is it the Ceros? Ceros cycles, yes. It's 19 years yeah. and a little bit. Um, so there's a bunch of things around that 19 years. 19 From years. this, we can't say what, the, what which of those it is. If we had longer data, we'd get a more accurate figure on that, and we could yeah. say, oh, it's that, it's 18.6 or it's 19.0 something yeah. uh, or whatever. Uh, alternatively, we could also look at the uh, phase of that to see what it's fitting in with, you know. Yeah. So those things would be further clues, further investigation to look at those. There may be some other clues in these other periods as well. Uh, now, I think that's... Um, yeah, that's it. So, so that's um, a, a relatively simple uh, thing, but with a couple of things that uh, people won't, don't commonly do, like this transformation yeah. and the removal of the very, very strong cycle, yeah. allows us to see other stuff that's hiding underneath it there. Um, and in this case, um, it does appear that something that's happening on the sun is also happening on on the earth that we didn't previously know that was happening on the earth with those with those uh, harmonically related cycles and that pattern uh, i expect that we will find it other places than the earth and the sun well with good uh, analytical as time methods goes by. we may yeah. indeed yeah. and this certainly works and like you said you didn't change the direction of the data you just put a magnifying glass on it where you had to uh just be able to look at it without other things getting in your way it's just sort of like putting sunglasses on to remove the glare so that you can see better in the shadows yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So that's um, uh, that's that one. Ray, thank you for explaining that to me. Seasonal variations uh, in India and rainfall and analyzed as influenced by the sun. Hmm. So monsoon cycles. It's another one for it's yes, one indeed. in other countries and to be, be explored in various other timescales as well. The Cycles Research Institute.
cyclesresearchinstitute.org.